So um, the song shows that God's word shall go forth as, as rain. And um, the Lord began to send forth his rain at, at the, um, amen. amen, yes. So <clears throat> the rain for this time is, is the exact thing in which we're l looking at now. From verses 1 to 45 is showing, showing forth this rain in that, the rain in which we all must receive. And this is what make, this is what will make fat our bones as well. So the, this, these things here are the things in which we should really look at and really search out because this is where most of God's light will stream from in, in these last days. Because she, she tells us that if we learn, once we have, have a right un, knowledge of the, these things, this is when there will be a, um, a, go ahead. Amen, yes. So the whole world shall be awakened onto the true, the true light when, when we truly bring these things into our lives. Amen. All right, so we're going to continue from verse 17, but let us begin with a short word of, of prayer. Amen. All right. Hopefully we still have the, the notes up, the, the keynote slides. We left them in verse 16, seeing how Rome came to the Jews, and there was a, a group or a class there who was for Rome and another class who was against Rome. And those who are for Rome were in the what? Were in the majority. Amen. And those who are against Rome were in the minority. And this is, um, this is shown us the scene of the Son-in-Law crisis where those who will be for Rome will be in the majority. And Rome shall come, come in and destroy many. And, the, and when you go look at Matthew 24... The, um, we see that many, many shall fall. What many shall fall away, and these many here are are the are those who side with Roman doctrines, and and Rome is just the agent of Satan. So these those souls are there. Um, those, those souls in times past in verse sixteen is showing the souls that 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 shall side on the side of Satan in the near, near coming civil Sunday law and the Sunday law crisis as well. So we'll continue in verse 17. We're, remember, we're um, looking at Rome since verse 14. So verse 14 all the way down to 12.1 is regarding Rome and Rome only. However, you can see lessons there of showing um, separate things, but these things naturally were speaking of Rome itself. Amen? Following? Okay, so Daniel 11, verse 17, it says, He shall also set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom and upright ones with him. Who is this he and him? Rome. Amen, it's Rome. Because the rule that Uriah Smith put forth is that from verse 14, Rome is the one that establishes the vision. And the rest of this vision is dealing with Rome. It's showing the fourth. <clears throat> So, um, it will continue on. It says, Thus shall he do. He shall give him the daughter of women, corrupting her. But she, but she shall not stand on his side, neither be for him. And Michelle, this should be familiar to you, this verse. Because I remember we spoke about this on the walk. So, um, 
Go ahead. Yes. In 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 terms of time, yes, but in terms of the verses, no. Because this is we're in BC um fifties and sixties. Yes. Wow. They will aid aid in it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, them as well, because when you go to SPM, page two, paragraph one, it says the Amen and and and, and nominal churches. So, so it's both Adventists and the churches. She says, like Judas shall. Amen. Yes, nominal Adventists. Yeah, it's um because Paul Paul says that all. No, if you if you turn, yeah, if you turn, you are a part of that class now. Yes. Yeah. So by nominal, they, they, they give voice to the name, but they don't practice the tenets of mm -hmm. the name. Yes. So if only those that are true and, and faithful to, to what the name is, that the one that are going to stand against that truth. Amen, yes. So, yeah, um, Paul tells us that, all that say that they are Israel are not Israel. They just saying it. It's only, it's only just, just yeah, lip um, s service. So, but but they're not actually living it. So it is the it's the husk without the corn. It's just it's just a shell. You just you you look like one, but you're really not it. Go ahead, Alyssa. Amen. Yes. Amen. All. Many will say, Lord, Lord, but just because they're saying, Lord, Lord, doesn't mean they're actually following the Lord Jesus Christ. They're just saying it. And um, when you go to Isaiah 5, it shows you that as well. It says, but let us be called by thy name to take away um, my reproach. So, so they're only going with the name, but, but they eat their own bread. They have on their own apparel and all these things. So they're really not Adventists, but only going by the name. Go ahead. Yes. But at the same time, there's one application. Right? Yeah, and, and, and Satan. Amen. And when you when you understand <coughs> nominal Adventists and the nominal churches, are only those on Satan's side. Yes. It's really identifying. So no matter what group you are a part of, if you are a part of those that are held in Rome, that text applies to you. Amen. Whether it's Adventist, Buddhist, whatever it may be. Cult, it doesn't yeah. matter. On one level, but there is a level where you should view the church only mm -hmm. and see the work that the church is doing specifically. Amen. Uh, in that yes. Amen. Yes. The few. Amen. The many shall always end up persecuting the few. That's that. That's what always. That's what always happens throughout all time. The many persecute the few. So um. So and. The actually no. Oh, all right, so we we'll just continue with the verse, and Daniel in verse seventeen it says, "Yeah, he shall also set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom, and upright ones with him. Thus shall he do, and he shall give him the daughter of women, corrupting her, but she shall not stand on his side, neither be for him." Verse sixteen. Brought us down. Down, excuse me. Down to the conquest of Syria and Judea, Judea by the Romans. Rome had had um, previously. previously conquered Macedon and Thrace. Egypt was now all all that remained of the whole kingdom of Alexander, not brought into um, Amen to the Roman power, which power now set its face to enter by force into that country. So when the verse says he shall also set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom. This is, this is what it's speaking of, is that Rome now, now shall go forward and take Egypt so that now Rome, um, Rome now um, controls, controls the fears of the whole earth because the king of the north previously tried to do this but failed, 
but now Rome is doing it, and Rome is now the, the actual, Ro Rome is now the new king of the north because he took down, um, took down the old king of the north, which was, um, um, yes, amen. So the rule, the rule is that whoever is ruling over that, that area is the king of that area. So when we see Cyrus, when Cyrus took down Babylon, uh, the Bible calls him the king of Babylon. Then, then, then after all those who, who came after him were also the king of Babylon and also the king of Medes and the Persians. So, so whoever holds that area is the king of that area. So Rome took down um, the, the previous king of the north. So now he is the new king of the north. So now, so now Rome now is going to go take down Egypt to be the king over the whole known world at that time. All right. So can someone read the next paragraph, 235.4? Go ahead. Okay, young ears of Egypt. So, in verse 17, we're just taking, yet again, just taking the key points. I'm going to write them, write them out. So, in this verse, now we have Rome. Um, going to take Egypt. And now, and Pompeii is put put over as guardian of Ptolemy and his sister Cleopatra. Yes, amen. Yeah. True, yes, that is true. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um it is important because when one from one from conquers Egypt and when the world comes right there they're not conquering. Conquering, yes. Rome. They're defending. Yeah, because that was the the role they took up in verse um fifteen. Yeah, Fourteen and fifteen. Ah, yes. Amen, yes. I'm, I'm glad you said that. Yes. Amen. I was supposed to say that in the last one. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because this is something we have to see because it's just as when it said, it's how Satan works. Satan always comes first as an angel of life. We go to Matthew 4. Um, the, first, the first time he came towards, towards Christ upon, upon earth um, as 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 himself, he comes as an angel of light. So in the first test and second test, he comes as an angel of light. But then in the third test, if you go read read what um, is, is said upon that point, she says that now, now the disguise is gone. And now Satan fully shows forth his, his true self and, call, and wants to force Christ to worship him. So this is, this is the, the plan of what Satan does throughout all history. And he uses Babylon, Medes and Persians, Greece, now, then now he's using Rome. He always look he always comes as this angel of light, and in this case, he's coming as a guardian over Egypt, of the young heirs of Egypt. But let's continue. Alright, so alright, and the left we have um the king who who died in BC fifty one and 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 his children, yep, Ptolemy and um and his sister Cleopatra. So, just to have a, um, a view of how they looked in that time as well. All right, now continuing verse 17. So, now verse 17 also shows you a civil war. There, and when you look at Daniel 11, there's many civil wars in Daniel 11. Because the first civil war that is shown, it, Rashad went over, it was in verse uh, 4. Where now the north, south, east, and west, they are all they are all part of Greece, 
they end up fighting within themselves and there's continually civil wars happening. So that's telling us at the end of the world, in the United States, there, were, there, there will be many civil wars in terms of um, economics, um, economics, political, and, 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 and all these realms, many people shall fight themselves in it and the United States as a whole too. Uh, yes. But a battle between labor unions is a civil war. This is something we must understand. Battles between politicians is a civil war. Battles mm -hmm. between sects of, of different groups we see in a nation. Because what you're going to see later is that there is leading men in, in certain sectors of this country. Mm -hmm. And when they clash, that in itself is a civil, civil war. war. That we, we, God's people, should pay attention to, or at least understand what's yeah. happening so that they can know when Christ moves. Amen. That's what you're looking for. It's you the movements of Christ. Christ. Amen. Yeah, and July Swin went over this all this is shown is Christ and Satan. We have to understand both movements of Christ and Satan. And we more so have to understand the movements of Christ because Christ is the one that tells you the movements of Satan so that you, you may not fall to the devices of Satan as Paul tells us. We are we must not be ignorant of Satan's devices. All right. Um Okay, continuing on, continuing on, 236, power of one. Can someone read this, please? A quarrel having not long after broken out between Poland, Pompey, and Caesar, the famous battle of Pharsalia was fought between the two generals. Pompey, being defeated, fled into Egypt. Caesar immediately followed him thither. But before his arrival, Pompey was basely murdered by Ptolemy, whose guardian he had been appointed. Caesar therefore assumed the appointment which had been given to Pompey as guardian of Ptolemy and Cleopatra. He found in Egypt in commotion from intent, in intestine disturbances, Ptolemy and Cleopatra having become hostile to each other, and she being deprived of her share of the government. Notwithstanding this, he did not hesitate to land at Alexandria with a small force, 800 horse and 3,200 foot, take cognizance of the quarrel, and undertake its settlement. The trouble daily increasing, Caesar found his small force insufficient to maintain his position, and being unable to leave Egypt on account of the north wind which blew at that season, he sent into Asia, ordering all the troops he had in that quarter to come to his assistance as soon as possible. Amen. So um, this is the civil war I, I was speaking of. And just as Swinney was saying, it may not look, it may not be in the sense of arms, but that will happen as well in the future. The literal arms um, actually men fighting. Last year on, um, on yes, that was showing an, an instance of civil war because because the men of this nation rose, rose up and fought against the leaders of this nation. That, that's an illustration of what, what we were saying of this civil war. So here you have Daniel eleven seventeen is bringing to view the battle between Pompey and Julius Caesar. So... And now, but Julius Caesar comes out as the victor, and Julius Caesar now is the guardian over um, um, Ptolemy and, and um, Cleopatra. Amen. And, and these, the same two that were um, put under Pompey, one of them, Ptolemy, ends up killing Pompey. So just bring out all the key points. But yet again, we have to go back for ourselves and look at these histories, because it's a lot of history, too, to... to to have in mind as well. Okay. And there's and each mind will see and bring out different things as well. For I am just only one man. Go ahead. One thing I realized that because of how they got power, they all fought virtually. Go ahead. Yes. No, actually, I, I can see what you're saying because with, with, with him as well, he, his, his reign was a reign of peace, and he died also in peace. Um, the way, 
Um, Mm-hmm. Oh, you're talking about not Augustus Caesar. You're talking about um, Julius. Yeah, Julius Caesar. Yes, yeah. Julius Caesar. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's your guardian. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. Got it. Yes. Amen. So what, what you're saying is showing that the woman, which is showing forth a church, the church has its own intentions with, with, with the kings of the earth to put herself above the kings of the earth. Yeah. Yes. Jezebel um, and Herodias. Seventeen. Yes. The whore that that yeah. yeah there's no real name yeah the, yeah there's no name to it yeah all right so okay go to two dr two thirty six paragraph two can so read this as well please. Amen. Okay, so now this is Julius Caesar here. So now he, he was here saying that it was his right to rule over them because, because their father told, them, told him to r- rule, rule over them. So now, um, but, but Egypt is not like this. And, um, and excuse me, yes, she sees this. Um, she sees this and then uses this to her own, um, yeah, amen, to go and seat herself upon, 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 upon the kingdom of, of the world. So the church shall see clearly who is the ruling power and shall go towards that ruling power to go and seat herself with the ruling power so that she might rule with them. All right. Amen. And how? That's supposed to be part of the issues that we should be part of. And then when things fall apart, you know, we have to use them again. Amen. So now you can use this verse, just as you said, to go and show, show, um, show um, women of this time what not, not to do. Because these things we will literally have to bring up to go and show that these things will not help you in the end. Because I think she ended up poisoning herself also at yeah. at yeah. the end of, of her life. Yeah. So so we can show literal females do not go this route because it shall only destroy you in the end. Like yeah. Oh, I didn't know that part. Yeah. But amen. All right, DAR 236 paragraph 3. Can someone read this as well, please?
the matter was finally brought before him, and advocates appointed to plead the cause of the respective parties. Cleopatra, aware of the foible, foible yes. of the great Roman conqueror, judged that the beauty of her presence would be more effectual in securing judgment in, in her favor than any advocate she could employ. To reach his presence undetected, she had recourse to the following stratagem, laying herself at full length in a bundle of clothes. Uh, Apollodorus, her Sicilian, Sicilian servant. servant, wrapped it up in a cloth, <coughs> yeah, wrapped it up in a cloth, tied it with a, th with a thong, and raised it upon the her Herculean sh shoulders. Herculean shoulders sought the apartments of Caesar, Caesar, Caesar. Claiming to have a present for the Roman general, he was admitted to the gate of the citadel, entered into the presence of Caesar, and deposited the burden at his feet. When Caesar had unbound the animated bundle, lo, the beautiful Cleopatra stood before him. He was far from being displeased with the stratagem, and being of a character described in Second Peter 2.14, the first sight of so beautiful a person, says Rawling, had all the effect upon him she, de she had desired. Amen. And that verse says, having eyes full of, um, of, uh, of the, yes, amen, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. So, this is what she, she used, she used, she used her looks to go forward and gain, gain the, um, the head of, of, of the nation with Julius Caesar. So now, as we, um, as you know in history, as we go along, now Julius, Julius Caesar connects with Cleopatra. And as the verse says, but she shall not stand on his side, neither before him. So this, this portion of the verse tells us the, the ending of, of, this, of this, yeah, amen, this relationship, this unlawful alliance here. Go ahead. Wouldn't the looks and beauty of a church be like their, their status and their, um, like how much they feed the poor and all this, you know, stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, you could, you could apply it to that. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm Yep. And you she she that building is so it, it captures your eyes. Yeah. Having eyes full of adultery. So and because Zion is also beautiful as well. Mm -hmm. And the kings the kings of the earth shall see that, but they shall more so side with the Romans. Um with 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 the Romish church rather I should say. The yeah. beauty that the world loves about the Catholic Church is actually the organization. Mm -hmm. she, she's one of the most organized systems on this planet. And the way she, every single where on this globe where there's a Catholic Church, they all function under the Pope. Yep. None of mm -hmm. them work outside of the decision the Pope makes. And, and people, governments love that. You know, right. This is the only, but when you look at everything else, it's just function, it's confusion. The Catholic Church is one system where everything functions under this one man. Amen. And this is what they shall show forth unto the, the, the king, the kings of the earth, and they shall say say the same thing as Caesar of old. Right, because that's one of Satan's attributes of the angel of light. That's the mm -hmm. angel that he puts on. Amen. Alright, so now because um yeah, because he he sees this. He 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 then takes her, and now this is this is now Rome speaking again, because remember we saw in verse fourteen it says Rome spoke. So now this is now Caesar is the head of Rome. So now when he speaks, the whole of Rome is speaking. So now when Rome speaks, we shall see what shall happen in the earth as well within within Egypt, because Egypt is a symbol of the world. All right, can someone read this paragraph as well? Dr. Two thirty seven.
according to the intent of the Lord. Conquerors fall. Mm -hmm. The chief minister of state, having been principally in instrumental, instrumental in expelling Cleopatra from the throne, feared the result of her restoration. He therefore began to excite jealousy and hostility against the people by insinuating among the populace that he designed eventually to give Cleopatra the sole power. Open sedition to the house. Philippite, the head of 20,000 men, advanced to drive people from Alexandria. Skillfully disposing his small body of men in the streets and alleys of the city, Caesar found no difficulty in repelling the attempt. The Egyptians undertook to destroy his fleet. He reported, he retorted, reported by burning there. Some of the burning vessels being driven near the city, several of the buildings of the city took fire, and the famous Alexandrian library contained nearly 400,000 volumes. Amen. So because she took this route, this is now now Caesar speaks and says that both um both of them should um reign jointly according to the intent of the will. So now in this paragraph now we'll see the portion of the verse that says on the upright ones um with him. We'll see who the upright ones are. Can someone read this paragraph as well, please? Wait, no, wait, the first part. Two, three, three, seven point two. Amen. So this was um said previously we was talking about verse sixteen. Now verse seventeen, this is um verse seventeen is very um is is sh sh showing forth showing forth what what we shall see very soon. Because it says that the Jews who held the passes into where? Into Egypt. So alright, I'm I'm just draw a rough sketch. So this this Let's put this whole area is Ju Judea here. And underneath here is, over in this area, is Egypt. So Rome needed to pass through th this area to get, get to, to um, Egypt so that, so, that, so that he can war, war, war with them. But the only way in which, which this could have happened is if, is if the Jews... Um, allowed Rome to pass through the, their land. So, um, so just as the, the quote says, it says, without this, the whole plan must have failed. So the linchpin for this, for this whole battle were the Jews. If the Jews had not allowed Rome to pass through their land, to come out into Egypt, to war against Egypt, Rome wouldn't have won in this battle. So, Exactly, just like the quote says, nominal Adventists also. So this is, and just as Swinton said previously, you can look at it in as many aspects, but I'm just dealing with this one aspect um, in this time, that, the, um, that Adventists will be a part of it to go and help Rome reach its height. I saw a hand. Yeah, I was going to say, there's also a nice history to add to that. Um, it's like people talk about Julius Caesar almost died in this battle too. And it was the Jews that actually saved him. It, it, oh. it, was a, it was a sea battle, and he literally almost died. And the Jews mm. showed up right at that moment and rescued him from being killed. Oh. And I, I thought that was a nice piece to go with this verse. Amen. So, so then from, from that in history, it shows that 
Rome could have been done right then and there. Rome, the whole system of Rome could have fell, but if it wasn't because of the Jews, um, Rome, Rome would have died. But because of the Jews, Rome lived on, and now this is why we end up having the Holocaust and many other things. So the sins of the Jews is very great, and many things are upon, upon the Jews. But if, if, if we follow in the same path, um, our sins would be even more great than, than theirs because we have all these past histories to see what not to do. And then if we do it, we're just plucking out our, plucking out our eyes and seeing these things and saying, I'm, I'm still going to go for, forth and do the very same thing but worse. Go ahead, Swindon. Yeah, so, so, um, so he says the nominal heavens and the nominal churches like do that. Amen. So she takes Judas and she makes both of them. Judas, yes. Which means every time you're talking about that traitor, you're talking about all the. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. See, it's it's the both the Protestants and the Adventists. Yeah, the Jews is Protestant too. Yes. Paul, Paul says that, you know, not one inwardly, outwardly, it's one inwardly. They, mm -hmm. both, they profess Christ. And you just said that they had, the Protestants had an opportunity to kill Rome. Yes. And, and they, they amen. And they, and they do didn't it. do it. Amen. So. Um, there's a judgment for, 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 for those professed nominal Protestants as well. So, yeah, the, these men here were the false, were false Jews. Yeah, spiritual Jews, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. So, yeah. So, all those who end up fighting against Rome and 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 live to the light, they are a part of the true Adventists, the 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 ones who are truly looking for the second advent of Christ. So, yes, the the true Jews, which is Abraham's seed. Satan. Amen. Yes. Amen. And there's only one true Jew. Amen. And yeah. Amen. And John 8, Christ, Christ says that. It says, He says, He He says, He says, um, you're not Abraham's seed. But then he says, Ye are Abraham's seed. And he says that to the Jews. He says that directly to the to the Jews and the Pharisees. That Amen. In the flesh. And then you go to Galatians 4 to understand what he's meaning by that. You, where, where you have the natural one, where, where, which is part of the many, which is Ishmael, and then the few, which is Isaac, and the many persecuted the few. So it, it is really um, just showing um, the, the Jews if we're true Jews or Abraham's seed of Isaac or not. So if Judea would have kept, yes, shut, shut this gate here, Rome wouldn't couldn't have passed into Egypt and would, um, wouldn't have won, won, this, um, won this war. And if the Jews had not saved Caesar, Rome wouldn't have won, won the war even after they opened, opened the gate. Go ahead. Titus. No, oh. Um, the Lord opened the gate. The gate, yeah. The gate. When he opened the gate, the gate, they were able to. Oh, yes, it didn't open. But they were able to. In the beginning, and the Lord gave them their desire. Yeah, at the end. Yeah. That's what y'all wanted? This is what you get. Yeah. Because no man left those gates open. God himself opened those gates. Just like with Babylon. He gave them their desire. Because by opening the gates of Rome in the beginning, they were showing the Lord that they desired Yeah. And they got and the Romans. The world, they, well, God, all right. yeah. And then in killing Christ, they sort of um, yeah, you know, sealed it. That, yeah. They said, we have no king but Caesar. So when, when Caesar came, why you lock Caesar out? They yeah. hold your king. Amen. Yeah, for them, yeah. For, 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 for Paul's charm for interest. Amen. All right, so um, they are 238. Just going exactly with what, what we were just saying. It says, By the upright ones of the text are doubtless meant the Jews, who gave him the assistance already mentioned. Without this, he must have failed. 
With it, he completely subdued Egypt to his power, B.C. 47. So without this, without this gate being open, um, they wouldn't have one. And I'm stressing this point because it's not, it's, it's not only Adventists at large, it's also talking about ourselves. If we leave the gate, gate of our heart open, yeah. Satan, amen, Satan's going to come in. Well, so, the the amen, yes, at the Sunday Law, this one, this gate is wide open. Uh, and, and the Jews, which is the nominal Adventists, nominal churches, have that gate open. Rome comes in. Amen. Mm -hmm. It says, Satan is going about as a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. And Paul tells us that he has to keep on the whole armor of God. So we, we, if you have an armor, you never, um, have, you, you never have your guard down. You always have your shield, always have your helmet, and, your, and, your, and, and the, the chest plate on. Okay. Oh, I forgot I had a picture in here with this. The passes of Egypt. So, yeah, if you see see here, Judea touches Egypt as well, and you have this line there at at the the bottom, and it says the crossing point, and the crossing point is Rafa, and Rafa is also Rafia. So yet again, dealing um in times past years ago, men have thrown dirt upon. Upon upon these things, the, the battle of Paneum and Raphia. These 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 battles we have to understand correctly because Satan has caused men to go and put wrong 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 interpretations and wrong wrong things upon it, so that it can deter our minds from from the truth of these points. So, if this if this point had had been blocked and closed off yet again, Rome wouldn't have come in. All right. Yes. Amen. All right. Okay, so read 238, paragraph 2. Oh, I forgot. Upright ones here. It's the Jews. The upright ones are those who understand. 238.2. Can someone read this paragraph, please? Caesar had conceived the new prophet, by whom he had one son, is assigned by his historian, and people will read of his undertaking to eliminate the Olympic campaign as the Egyptian war. Okay, so Julius Caesar only wars against Egypt because of the woman. All right, continuing on. This kept him much longer in Egypt than in Egypt as a barge, for spending whole nights in feasting. And With the, the which dissolutes dreams. But, but, said the prophet, she shall not stand at his side, neither be for him. She is after after when she was herself defended. The enemy of the just is Caesar, and Caesar the whole power against him. All right, so she was with Egypt, she was with the south, then she moves onward to the north, and then, and then she moves back, back to the south with Mark Anthony to go and fight against Augustus Caesar. So, yes, the movements of, of the woman, amen. And, it's, and she moves and she moves throughout the earth as well, just like the movements of the dragon. They, they both move and, and we have to understand their movements. One is showing the civil aspect, one is showing the religious aspect and we have to fight against both of them. We, we, we have our right and our left arm and we have to fight against both of them. All right. Um, for time, I'm going to continue. It says, After this, shall he turn his face onto the isles, and shall take many. But a prince for his own, for his own behalf shall cause the reproach offered by him to cease. Without his own reproach, he shall cause it to turn upon him. Then, then, then he shall turn his face toward the fort of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. All right. Um, so speaking... Speaking of Caesar, um, one second, let me see. Can someone read? Um, actually, I may skip this just for time. We'll go read it separately. 
Yeah, it's just showing forth the death of Caesar, which is more so shown in this paragraph. Can some read 239, paragraph 2? After this conquest, Caesar defeated the last remaining fragments of Pompey's party. Cato, Cato and Castillo in Africa, and Livianus and Varus in Spain. Returning to Rome, the fort of his own land, he was made perpetual um, dictator. And such other powers and honors were granted him as rendered him, in fact, absolute sovereign of the whole empire. For the prophet had said that he should stumble and fall. The language implies that his overthrow would be sudden and unexpected, like a person accident accidentally stumbling in his walk. And so this man, who had fought and won 500 battles, taken 1,000 cities and slain 1,192,000 men, fell not in the, the din of battle and hour of strife, but when he thought his pathway was smooth and strewn with flowers, and when danger was supposed to be far away. For taking his seat in the Senate chamber upon his throne of gold to receive at hand, at the hand of, of that body the title of king, the dagger of treachery suddenly struck him into the heart. Cap, um, Cassius, Brutus, and other conspirators, conspirators rushed upon him, and he fell, pierced with 23 wounds. Thus he, he, sudden, he suddenly stumbled and fell and was not found. Amen. The last slide fulfills the part in verse 18 where it says that where it says that he shall um, his face towards towards the isles, and this is where he wins wins um, wins yeah all, all these battles and wars. Now in verse 19 is shown here. Where now after winning all these battles and wars for these past three years from because between verse 17 and 18 and 19 is three years because this was 47 BC and this was 44 BC. So in this, and then yeah, and then come to this this year and and um yeah and this year here this is where now he dies by men men in his own in his own senate. Oh, and another point is that Julius Caesar was the first dictator as well for Rome. And another point, yes, ever he was the first dictator. And um, when, when he came up, one of the things in which he did was change the calendar. So keep this in mind to what, what we shall see in Daniel 11, verse 30, 31, and 32. Yeah. Julius Caesar comes and changes the calendar and makes the Julian calendar. So when the first dictator comes about, he shall change what? Time frame. Times and laws. Go ahead, Conard. Yeah, there's a nice verse to show the part where you read that he shall not be found. Mm -hmm. I was prophesying of people like Julius Caesar. In Psalms 37 35, it says, I have seen the wicked in great power, Julius Caesar. Ah, amen. And spreading himself like a green bay tree. Bay tree yes. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I, I sought him, but he could not be found. Amen. Ah, that's nice. Yes. Because he was literally spreading himself as a green bay tree. Because he was conquer, he was going forth conquering and to conquer. Mm -hmm. Going, putting forth himself as this, as this, as one as Christ, and no further, Amen. And then, and then the one who comes up and changes times and laws dies by the hand of his own men. So, Amen. You die by the sword. So when we see one comes up that's going to change times and laws, the ones, the, the ones who help them change times and laws will raise up their sword to go and cut, cut down um, Rome again. So, so. All these, all these verses are really preparing the way for when, when, when the church rules over Rome, and it's really pointing forward to the United States, when the church rules over the United States. All right. So, yeah, this is Cassius on the left and Brutus on the right. These two men and, and, and some more men that ended up taking the life of Julius Caesar, fulfilling Daniel eleven nineteen. Brutus uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I do remember hearing some of that. All right. Dan eleven twenty. Now we can look at Augustus Caesar. Then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes, in the glory of, of the kingdom. But, but within few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. Augustus Caesar succeeded his uncle Julius, 
by whom he had been adopted as his successor. He publicly announced his adoption by his, by his uncle and took his name, to which he, he um, added that of Oct... Oct thank you, yes. Combining with Mark Anthony and Lepidus to avenge the death of Caesar, they formed what is called the triumvirate form of government. So, now in verse 20, you have this new king come up with a razor of taxes. And these, from verse 20 to, <clears throat> excuse me, 22, we should be familiar with in, um, a little bit more because all these things are shown in the book of Luke and in the book of um, Matthew as well. Go ahead. Yes. Yes, that's another thing. And there is a triumvirate that leads to Caesar. Those yeah. two are important. Uh, more, um, next week, sorry. I'll, I'll probably bring up more some of it. And there's another thing is Augustus is not the ruler of Rome. Augustus is the ruler of the world. Oh, yes. Julius was only the ruler of, of Rome. This is yeah. something, two things to keep in hmm. mind that is important for the end of the world. Yes. Amen. So, yes, yeah, first America, then, yeah, then the world. Amen. So, um, I remember one rule that Jeff always brought about. It's simple, the easiest thing. One plus two equals what? Three. Three. So with so with all these Caesars, these three Caesars, um, the, these the, the first two Caesars is really pointing down to the to the last one in the United States. But the first, but the three Caesars in themselves also teach you another separate truth. In, in and of itself, because it's like Swinton said, the um, Julius and Augustus teach you about about Dan Lemon, forty um forty one and forty two, but then the three Caesars in themselves also teach you about Dan Lemon forty also to forty five, and they, many things come out from it. Yeah, so and just like Swinton was saying, this is he Augustus. It's the second yes, it's the second triumvirate. He joins with Mark Anthony and Lepidus. Lepidus. Excuse me, Lepidus. There, yes. And this, uh, he's the same one that was brought up in verse, I think, 15, I believe, we, we read about. Gotcha, Sasha. And this is the second charm for it. And this is the, and he's the, the emperor of the world. And when, when the, the king of the world is actually born, Jesus Christ. It says, Having subsequently firmly established himself in the empire, the Senate conferred upon him the title of Augustus. And, and the um, uh, uh, other members of the, um, amen, being now dead, he became supreme ruler. All right. It says he was emphatically a raiser of taxes. Luke, and speaking of the events that, um, that, that, excuse me, amen, at, at the time when Christ was born, says, and it, it, amen, in those days that there were not a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, Luke chapter 2, verse 1, yeah, that, amen, he taxed the whole world, that shows you he's the king of the world, yes, Yes. There was mm -hmm. first a census. That's mm -hmm. what brought Joseph and Mary back to. It was a numbering of, of the, the people. people. So now you have mm -hmm. to bring in here the numbering of, of the, the people. people because Amen. whatever happens when you number the people, then we should see it happening in, in, in this time. Amen. Oh, sorry. Now, now since you brought that up, because that brings in the time of Moses, and now that brought my mind back to. This, this here, when, when Rome passed through, through the land. Passing through the land is a subject in which we have to understand as well. That in, in and of itself is something that we can study because some heathen nations didn't want Israel to pass through their land. And because of that, the Lord, the Lord destroyed them when you go to Numbers and so forth. So from what I have seen thus far, when you pass through someone's land, you are, you are accepting their, 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 yes, their doctrines and they're allied onto them. So when, when Judea allowed Rome to pass through the land, it's shown that they're allied onto them. 
And then I think it was, I can't remember which heathen king it was. I want to say the Amorites or the Ammonites in the time of Moses. Yeah, yes, it was Edom. Thank you. Yes, it was Edom. Edom told, told Moses, no, you cannot pass through the land. So, so it's showing a group, a group there that is, that is fighting against the doctrines of Christ. And it's saying that they, they will not allow, allow Israel to pass through their land. And they won't accept the, 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 the doctrines of the true God of heaven. So, yes, that, I forgot to bring that point up from then. So this is the second triumvirate here, as we, we said. Uh, um, yeah, uh, this, this is Caesar. Yeah, Caesar, Mark Antony, and Lepidus. It's also important that he was Octavian before he became Augustus, Augustus Caesar. Very yes, it's a name. Yes, yeah, name change when he all takes over the whole world. Amen. Yes. Amen. So. This is why we say you have to go back and study these things for yourself because there's, there's very many, like, gems strewn throughout, throughout all these histories for us, for us to pick up. And yet again, I'm only one man, so I can only take, I, my hands can only hold so much. All right. And then, yes, this is Augustus Caesar now after, because now he's the sole ruler. Before, it was all three of them. And then after now, it's the sole ruler here. Augustus Caesar. Right. Yes, keep in mind, yes, his name here is different. Yeah, when, when, when he's with the three, then he's by himself. His name, his name changes, Augustus Caesar now. All right. Can someone read this paragraph, please? 240.2. Auspice, auspice, auspicious, yes, our. Our Lord. Six. Amen. So he ends up. So when when he he rules, it's the golden age, and it's and it's fitting because in his time, Christ is born. Oh uh, yes, Amen. Yeah. Son. Yes. Yes, yeah, sudden destruction. Think about the second half of that. Because Christ came to do what? To bring a sword. Yeah. Christ didn't come to put man at variance with his, his, his father's mother. And so, but it's nice. The world was at peace, so God sent Christ. Prince of, Prince of peace. peace. Amen. Amen. Um, okay, yes. Turn on. Now we look at the vow king, this fourth king, Tiberius Caesar. It says, and in his estate, in Augustus Caesar's estate, shall stand up a vow person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. So the fourth, the fourth nation um, establishes the vision, and Tiberius Caesar establishes the vision of also Daniel 9, because he is, he, he is the, the emperor that is reigning when Christ dies. And the vision, um, and you can also see in one sense, is, is, is all speaking about the cross. All three of them established the vision. Amen, yes, all three of them established. Oh, yes, that was what he was talking about the other day, yeah, yes. And, and, um, but it wasn't for Caesar, you need to have the other one. Caesar, Amen. Caesar brings the fourth kingdom, the other one brings Mary in, and then the last one goes to death. Yeah, amen. So, um, when... 
when you look at the the three the three kings of Persia, you have Cyrus, Darius, and Xerxes Ar Ar with the three decrees with originating, reaffirming, and establishing. Yeah. And with the Caesars, you have this very same thing: yeah. Julius, Augustus, and Tiberius with originating, reaffirming, and establishing. So Tiberius Caesar establish it, so confirms it. Sorry. Rome establishes the vision. Amen. Yes. Establish Amen. Yes. Okay, yes. So Tiberius, yes, it, he he's the one that is in the time period of the cross. Go ahead, Connor. Knows this, yep. And and Tiberius, yep. It's plain. Amen. Ah, yes. Rome I was. Ah. Right yeah. Amen. Into, amen. To a mistake, because these um these verses here are the history of Rome that everybody has searched up, have studied, and everybody has heard of. And and amen. Yeah, yeah. They they teach these men the most, so it should be easy to really see the time of Christ, because that's what it's really talking about. It's not really talking about the kings or these emperors here. It's talking about Christ being born. So. Yes, yeah, that's the thing. They 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 try to hide it. Amen. All right. Um. So this paragraph here ends up showing how he's he's vile and he tries to hide hide his his vileness for for some time. So skip that for now for time. It says during the remainder of the life of Augustus, he um Tiberius behaved with great prudence and um ability concluding a war with the Germans in such a manner as to merit a triumph. So he comes up with flatteries, just like how Rome, literally the nation came up in the same way. He came up in this nice, nice, very, in this nice way. But, but then you see the vileness of, of, of this man after, and you see the vileness of Rome after. Um, jump down one sentence. It says, on the death of Augustus, he succeeded without what? Opposition. Opposition. To the sovereignty of the empire, which, which, however, with his um, yeah, um, amen. He he affected to decline until repeatedly solicited by the servile senate. So the nation saw clamor for 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 the vileness of of the church to reign. Yes. Taken, he has the kingdom. Yeah. That was a part of the, of the Tiberius Caesar. But they didn't want him to be Caesar at first. Yes. Because he was, because they all knew he was this vile, vile man. <laughs> Tiberius Caesar. All right. Can someone read 241.3? 241.3? Mr. Lament, this simulation, this simulation, on its part, on its part, flattery on the part of the Sherlock Senate, and a possession of the kingdom without opposition, such were the circumstances attending his accession to the throne, and such were the circumstances for which the prophecy called. Amen. Okay. Um... I'm going to skip this also for time. Um, okay. Uh, what was it? Yeah, this ends up showing at the end the death of, of, of the vile king as well. All right, and now let's go to verse 22. Can someone re read this as well? Mr. Newton presents the 
following reading as a green and better with the original. And the arms of the overflow shall be overflowed from before him and shall be broken. The expression signify revolution and violence. And in fulfillment, we should look for the arms of Tiberius, the overflow, to be overflown, or in other words, for him to suffer a violent death. To show how this was accomplished, we again have recourse to Encyclopedia Americana, Art Tiberius. Yeah, Art. Okay. Yeah, and the verse says, and, and with, with the arms of a flood, shall they be, um, oh, shall they be, oh, 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 oh. Overflown from before him and shall be broken. Yea, also the prince of the covenant. So with Tiberius Caesar is directly linked the, the, the death of Jesus Christ. Sorry, one second. Okay, cool. Um, so in this paragraph, it shows how he was killed on March 16, 37 AD, when he was suffocated to death by... Um, by Macro, who wanted to take his, his place. And to look for the part when he, with, with, with the death of Christ, um, many of the, many of the other, um, pioneers write upon, upon this point. Because in verse 22, it says, "Yea, also the prince of the covenant." The last, oh. the, la the last part, the last part of verse twenty-two show shows you in, in the time of his reign. This is when Jesus Christ dies, because his reign ends in March sixteen thirty-seven A.D., and, and Jesus Christ died in thirty-one, six years prior to the death of Caesar. Okay, so now the R two forty-three paragraph two clearly tells us that this is the time of the time of Christ, and this is where um, this is where he dies in the reign of, of Christ. I mean, he, he dies in the reign of um, Tiberius Caesar. And Luke 3, verses 1 to 3, tells us this. It's in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, John the Baptist commenced his ministry. So, and we know six months, um, John, John began his work six months before Jesus Christ did. And then, and then, um, this Caesar here is 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 the one that's ruling over the whole earth and and also aids in the death of Christ by allowing these things to happen because because these things have to come to his ears as well because the gospel has to come to every single king. All right, last verse that that I'll take up is Dan eleven verse twenty three says and after the league made with him he shall work deceitfully. For he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. So now this verse jumps back in time. So this is something I don't clearly see as yet. I don't know why it does it, but I do know why, why it does in this sense. It's to add more, more thoughts on the things in which, in which the Lord does not show. Amen. Yes, from verses um, 17 to 18 down to 22. So now the Lord goes back over those same verses, but doing it, in it but, but showing different events in the same times of Julius, Augustus, and Tiberius Caesar, and coming down into Constantine and so forth. So, can I read this paragraph, please? Return it.
violence. And in this, in his reign, the strength of the covenant, <coughs> strength of the covenant, Jesus of Nazareth, was put to death upon the cross. That's why I want to explain to you. Christ can never be broken or put to death again. Hence, in no other government, and no other time, can we fit, can we find a fulfillment of this event. Some attempt to apply these verses to Antiochus and make one of the Jewish high priests the prince of the covenant, though they are never called such. This is the same kind of reasoning which enables to make the reign of Antiochus a fulfillment of the, of the little horn that it is. And it is offered for the same purpose, namely to break the great chain of evidence by which it is shown that the that the Advent doctrine is the doctrine of the Bible, and that Christ is now at the door. But the evidence cannot be overthrown. The chain cannot be broken. Amen. So, what 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 he's speaking of, of here is that um, this is why we have this date date on the chart one fifty eight B C, because l literal Catholics use this verse to turn. Um, use, sorry, use um, verse, uh, I think the, is it the last verse? Yes, they use the last verse to turn it from Christ and to show a whole separate event. But, but what Uriah Smith is saying here is that this, this cannot be because the Jewish high priest was never called the prince of the um, um, yeah, covenant. So, so you cannot say that. So that the Jewish, um, that that the death, death of one of these priests is fulfilling this verse, mm -hmm. because the only one that's that's actually called that is only Jesus Christ. So, so it is it is clearly there setting forth that this is dealing with dealing with Rome. So Rome uses this to turn it from themselves to, to something else, so that so that they are not seen. I saw two hands, Canard, then Swindon. Yeah, it's there. Well, I can understand it now why it's like that. You know, because oh, yes, because it says it right there. Yeah. yeah. It tells you. And yes. And it connects it to Revelation 12. Once mm -hmm. Christ dies, Satan's cast out. Ro Amen. So, so Christ, God is, Rome is done from the death of Christ, the paganism, it's all done. Mm -hmm. Now Satan is cast out of heaven. He has nothing to do with setting up nations anymore. Nope. So what does he do from that point on? It goes to religion now. Yeah. Yes. Now he's dealing with the religious affairs. And you can see 23 is like this transition. This is the transition, the yes. To the church now. Mm -hmm. it's it's time time from, yeah, it takes a Amen. Time. So yes, yeah. Go ahead, Swindon. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, the point I was going to make in relation to why this verse seems so sudden. Um, if you read the verse, it says he shall be strong with a what people? Small people. By, by the time they come to Tiberius, are they a small people? No. Okay, yeah. so then that Empire. forces you to look at Rome when there was back. a small people. So just, if you just look at the verse, it, it tells, tells you, you I need to go back to when Rome was a small people. Amen. All right, so then so they go back to the, to the hundreds bc to see rome as a small people because that's when they were small in the 200s and the 100s yeah right here with the league of the jews because It has to go back. When Rome was a small people, and know that the league was made while they were a small people. Amen. Yes. I was looking for it. It's tied to Daniel 8 because it's the little horn. Yeah. So you got to tie it. Yeah, that's, that's a small people. Oh, yes. Yeah, the little, yes, the little horn. Yes, amen. All right, can someone read this paragraph? I'm, I'm well over time. How much? Having taken us? Yes. Having taken us down through the secular events of the empire to the end of the 70 weeks, the prophet... In verse 23, it takes us back to the time when the Romans became directly connected with the people of God by the Jewish League, B.C. 161. From which point, <coughs> we are then taken down in a direct line of events to the final triumph of the church and the setting up of God's everlasting kingdom. The Jews, being grievously oppressed by the Syrian king, 
send an embassy to Rome to solicit the aid of the Romans and to join themselves in a league of amity and confederacy with them. The Romans listened to the request of the Jews and granted them a decree couched in these words. All right, so to look at this league, you have these things in which we, we can read. And also the charts tell us exactly the, the, the places we can go to read it to go find out what this league league is. But like Kanar was um, speaking of, it says having, it says, it says that we pass through secular events. And after it, now it's dealing with the Romans in connection with the people of God. So it's dealing with um, religious events now. And um, yeah, and, and it's showing the church from that point onward. So, so from verse 23 onward, our view now is, is changing from secular to religious. And then when you get to verse 30, that is when you really start seeing even more, more openly changing from secular to religious. And I believe, I think soon we'll take up verse 30 as we go along. So I do not know why he says B.C. 161. The chart says 158. He, may, he has, and if you look at history, if you're going to look on Google, it says 161 as well, but I don't know why it has that. I don't have. No, no. Yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, fifty-eight. Yes, yes. I don't understand it clearly, but there's a quote that says, "Bigger as what you wanted it." Yes. And that's all we need to know. Amen. Yeah. Bigger on the chart is as God wanted it. One fifty-eight is on the chart. That's one fifty-eight on the chart. As the league of the Jews. Totally. But we're going with one fifty-eight. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Okay, so now in the next slide, and this is the last slide. This last slide is just basically the um, the the terms of the contract that the Jews made with the Romans. So he, this is taken directly from First Maccabees, chapter eight, eight and nine. The chart tells us to, um, if you read First Maccabees chapter nine verse seventy to seventy one, and you go see see the things from Josephus as well. Those th those books and those chapters give us the league of the Jews. So from this point onward, now this is now where you see um, you see you see the church aspect. And now this is why Rome is brought up in verse fourteen, because another rule is that a nation is only brought up when it's brought in connection with God's people. So. In verse 14, you see it now because Rome is being brought up with God's people. And verse 14 shows it was in like 100s as well. When you, I would, I would have said, when you read what you're, I understand what Mario is saying, that Rome comes up there because of the change in the circumstances. Yes. So they don't immediately come in contact with God's people. That's why mm -hmm. the verse goes back to the king of the south and mm -hmm. the king of the north. So <clears throat> the Bible establishes while the king of the north and the king of the south is battling, Something's taking place over here. Yes, Rome so is coming out. bringing it in as being in contact. So I just wanted to make that approach. That it, it's just showing, let's just pay attention to this because we're going to get to it later. And later when they come in contact with God's people, in verse 19, I believe, 18, 19, the Bible brings them in fully now because... Yeah, with, with God's people. Pompeii, yeah, 16. Mm -hmm. God's Amen. So and it's the same thing with, with this land. This land was actually brought about in 1776. It was still, it was still, brought, it was brought up in, in the time of the 1260. But the Lord says no, 1798, because this is not when it's being brought, um, brought in with God's people. So yeah, with prophetic history, Amen. So these these things we have to understand this the 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 literal history and prophetic history. But literal and prophetic history are still one. Also, you have to because people will, I, I know people will challenge us with dates and so forth. Because it already happened in our time period with 539 B.C. and 538 B.C. with many other things. And now we know over this week, the Bible is the best history, is the only history book that Amen. records accurately the history of nations. So we Amen. So what people say, God determined what our prophetic events. Amen, yes. So, <clears throat> at, um, yet again, I know this is a lot of history. Um, I had to read through it probably like three, four times just to have certain things, certain like certain events in my mind. I know I still don't have every every bit and piece in my mind. Amen, yes. Go over it. And and the clearest way to see that is because we got to verse twenty three and he goes back. So that's so why you can go over it again. Amen. So so 
Amen. To go over it more than one time and going from different angles because in verse 23, all words takes it from a different angle. First one was secular, now this one's religious. So the Lord is trying to teach us how to study as we study at the same time. Go ahead. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. Well, what I like about the transition from, from the time Rome come up from 14 to 23 is that passage is showing you what the king was doing in relation to in regard to secular movement. Mm -hmm. When you come from 23 all the way down to Michael stand up, this part is just religion. What the king is doing in regards to the church. Okay, That's amen. Still the king. Yes. And what is doing in regards to the, the church? Amen. So it's showing you how Satan takes control of the secular sector. <clears throat> 23 showing you how he takes control of the religious sector. Sector, and amen. Have these two together. He amen. is about taking over church. And state. state. That's, that's what we're reading. So now, with, with, with what Kanar is saying, is that you have to go look at the seals at, uh, as well, because the seals is showing this very same thing of that. So, I say again, please go back and study these things. It's a lot. Re read it over, read it over, read it over. Look at different angles of it as well. And um, we, we have to see ourselves in this and, and, and where we are standing now and where we shall be in the very near future. That being said, shall we close with a word of prayer? Merciful Father in heaven, glory. Thank you. Thank you for your word and for, for the ways in which you have shown us these things, O Lord. Please, Father, help us to search these things out more and more, to, to um, see the things in which you you want us to see at, um, see from your word. Please, Father, help us to glean, glean um, all that we can and to live up to it as well, Lord. And we ask these things in your son's name we pray. Amen.